Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. Got a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's get right to it. This is the brand new Mini Cooper. Okay, yeah. This is the photo that's been hitting all over the interwebs over the past several days. As Mini's teasing us about what the brand new Cooper is. But we do have an official release date for this automobile as it will be shown off at the Los Angeles Motor Show, also at the Tokyo Motor Show at the same time. That date is November 18th of 2013. So if you couldn't wait to see what the new Mini looked like, at least now you've got a date to focus on. Next up on the list, the average age of automobiles continues to creep up in the United States market. Now Polk has done studies on this since 1995 and showed off that 247 million units were actually registered, automobiles and trucks, actually in the U.S. market. Now... That is as high as almost it's ever been. Back in 2008, it was 250 million units. So it's just a touch under that particular deal. Now, let's talk about the average age again. In 2012, the average age for an automobile in the U.S. market was 11.2 years. Well, that's creeped up now to 11.4 years in the year of 2013. Now, why is this? Well, it's a lot because modern-day automobiles are built better than they ever have been, so they last a lot longer. Not to mention the economic downturns definitely a look in that direction as people are hanging on to their automobiles. Now, Polk actually says that they think by 2018 that sales of automobiles will increase enough that the average registry will be at between 260 to 280 million units registered in the U.S. market, so that may bring the average age down quite a bit, but 11.4 is the highest it has ever been. Next up on the list, this is the very last convertible GT500 Shelby Mustang. Well, maybe not the last, but this one will be crossing the block on August 9th of 2013, a hot August nights. This auction actually be putting on by Barrett Jackson. Now, what you'll be buying is actually the rights to own the very last one, but that's nice because you're going to get to spec this automobile any way you want, whether you, what kind of interior you want, the exterior color, the striping, the wheels, whatever you want to change on this automobile, you can most definitely do because you're actually getting the dibs on the very last car to come off the production line. And all the cash that is going to be raised by this auction will be going to charity. It'll actually be going to the Brain Injury Association of America. And also, there's a little kicker to this deal. Indianapolis 500 and Baja 1000 winner Parnelli Jones will autograph the automobile. And a, one of the greats of American automobile racing history. So, pretty cool little deal. It'll be coming out August 19th of 2013, which is only in a handful of days, so you better get down there quick. Next up on the list, this is a picture of a Ford GT CP1. What does CP1 mean, you think? Confirmation Prototype 1. Yes, this is a test mule. This vehicle was actually built back in 2003 as Ford was actually putting together this program. Which means that this vehicle's got tons of stuff that never made the actual production line. This vehicle's actually in private owner's hands as Joseph Lamagedi actually bought this particular automobile from Ford back in 2008 when Ford was kind of looking ahead at the economic downturn that was coming down the pike and decided to sell off some of their stuff, which is this particular vehicle was one of them. This vehicle was considered non-essential assets by Ford Motor Company, and they sold it off. Now, this thing's got a ton of stuff that never made it to production. There were some cool seats with some cool accents that actually, during durability tests, actually didn't end up surviving. So, Also, the clamshell hood on the back of this particular automobile was made entirely out of carbon fiber until the bean counters up at Ford found out that it cost $45,000 per unit to build. So they built it out of something a little less expensive. Now, the trick is, too, is this vehicle's got a lot of mishmash of parts as the steering wheel came out of a Mustang. Steering column came out of, like, a Ford Windstar. So this was kind of a parts bin special when Ford was actually putting this deal together. Now, the car isn't a real car as much as it is anymore, as it has been governed where it can't go over five miles an hour. But, that being said, it's a prototype vehicle, which means it can't even be driven on public highways anyway, so... That uh, really isn't much of a use for that. But Joseph plans on keeping this for the next 20 or 30 years as the caretaker of this particular piece of Ford 
uh, uh, motor's history and then plans on passing it on to someone else who plans on carrying on the tradition of hanging on to this particular automobile. If not, maybe Ford may be coming back and knocking on his door the next several years. The vehicle does reside in Long Island in the two Ford GTs behind it, so don't feel too bad for Joseph. Those two GTs are his, so he's got enough Ford GTs to go play with nonetheless, but pretty cool little automobile. Next up on the list, speaking of cool, the Lamborghini Gallardo is the last Gallardo's continue to trickle out. A lot of special editions come out, and this one's no different. This is the LP570-4 Squadra Corsa. Now, this particular vehicle is tons of carbon fiber. It's a real track specialist. Advanced braking, special suspension settings. It's a lot lighter than the standard Gallardo, including great big carbon fiber rear wing that's on this vehicle. Now, that Squadra Corsa is a little bit, little bit piece of the puzzle to this particular program. As actually, that is the part of Automobilia Lamborghini that actually manages all the motorsports programs from the GT3 all the way down to the actual, some of the road racing stuff that goes on in and around Italy. So this is a pretty big deal when it comes to Lamborghini, giving a little tip of the hat to that particular part of the organization. But this thing's a pretty cool piece of kit. We'll be making its official debut at the Frankfurt Motor Show. Now, a lot of things will already tell you. The 570, let's go with the horsepower, is the normally aspirated V10. We get a little bump up in horsepower to 570 brake horsepower. And the Dash 4 obviously means this thing will be all-wheel drive. But we'll get a little closer picture to the real story behind this vehicle in Frankfurt. Next up on the list, Top Gear is in the news. The U.S. version of Top Gear is that it's actually got a debut date on the History Channel. It will be September 3rd of 2013 at 9 p.m. Eastern. Now, the regular cast of characters, Adam Ferrara and Tanner Faust and Rutledge Wood, will be making their return for Season 4. And I'm about to say something a little sacrilegious. Now, honest to goodness, my favorite version of the Top Gear is the U.K. version, but I do think the U.S. version is a lot more funny, which may be looked on quite a bit as being sacrilegious to say. But, obviously this thing is as far away from Top Gear as it ever has been, as they don't do in-studio in stuff anymore, they don't do any reasonably priced car stuff. The Stig, I think, only came out in two particular episodes last year, so... It's, it's about as far away as from Top Gear as you can. They only do the challenges, and they do them pretty well as far as that's concerned, even though they kind of beat the cars into the ground, but nonetheless, September 3rd, 9 p.m. Eastern on the History Channel, you can check out the brand new season, season four of Top Gear. Next up on the list, Bugatti Veyron. If you ever wanted to drive this thousand horsepower quad turbo monster all-wheel drive rocket ship that does 250 some odd miles an hour, maybe you don't have the cash to buy one of these vehicles. What about renting one? Would anybody be insane enough to actually rent one of these? Yes. In the United Kingdom, there's actually a particular group called Holders Vehicles Contracts that is going to be renting out Bugatti Veyrons. Now, how much do you think a daily rate is on one of these things? Yeah, it's going to be up there. 16,500 pounds sterling or, or 24,490 U.S. dollars. That's a pretty good chunk of change. What about if you wanted to rent one of these for the weekend and impress some of the ladies out there? Well, it's, you don't get a real weekend rate on this thing. 45,000 pounds sterling on this thing. Or 69,516 US dollars. So it's plenty expensive. But it's way cheaper than owning one of these. And boy, I hope they show... I hope they give you the big insurance on this thing because I plan on bringing this car back in a basket. And that's all there was that I thought was worth talking about for this week's Motor Cars Enthusiast. If you want to jump on over to the Facebook page, the link's down in the show notes. It'll take you right over there. You can check out the stuff we do over there. Also, if you want to subscribe to the channel, you can do so at any time. Get the first dibs on the brand new shows as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.